This trick is called a crank flip. Unusually, this took me around 30 seconds to learn this. No kidding. So, how? Oh, yeah! So a while back, Ben Cathro from Pink Bike invited me to help him learn how to crank flip, which is this trick we're doing here. It's part of a series of mountain biking videos on Pink Bike by Ben Cathro, all about how to mountain bike, and it's fantastic. Cathro is an expert rider and teacher, highly recommended, go watch. This episode was about learning and the skill he picked was a crank flip. Crank flips are kind of like the mountain bike equivalent of a kick flip on a skateboard, except rather than being cool, they're kind of lame. So you hop off the bike and whilst your feet are off the pedals, they do a full rotation and you catch them back in their original position. It looks kind of cool, I guess, but I don't know. It's just not got the, the style that a kickflip does in skateboarding. Anyway, whatever. By the way, this is my uh, DV8 Highlander. I was a little bit concerned that this idler pulley would cause a little extra friction and I wouldn't be able to do crank flips, but it's absolutely fine. This is actually a Scottish brand, believe it or not. Um, who would have thought a Scottish brand would be making carbon fibre bikes? But it is lovely. So we met up with Ben and started filming and we were just warming up. And before one of the cameras could even really focus on me, I just stomped one out of the gate. <laughs> I, I think we have to say we're just about to start filming and Mike might have already landed one. <laughs> and there you go, how to learn! Perhaps it was a fluke, but turns out it wasn't. I was able to pretty much consistently do these. Oh yes! yeah! <laughs> so the question is, how did I learn so fast? The answer is these bad boys. These shit guards, man. We'll see who's laughing at the end of the day. Just... Oh. Don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. You see, crank flips are a shin-busting nightmare. If you miss the front foot, then your weight will catch the back foot and with all of your weight will drive the pedal into your shin. That's the worst shinny you can have. Give me a bit more time in the air. Can you imagine how bad that would have been without shin guards? <laughs> the trick aspect of this trick is all about risk. It's actually not that hard to flip the pedals around and catch them. It's a what if you get it wrong type thing. It's kind of like when Danny McCaskill rides on a super high ledge. It's not that difficult to ride a bike in on sort of a pavement that wide or a ledge that wide. It's the what if factor. What if it goes wrong? It's the same with crank flips. If these go wrong, it's all in your shin and it's drawing blood. I really can't put into words just how bad shinnies are and I've had way too many on this channel to count. So crank flips, even though it's quite an easy skill, are inherently scary. But these massive shin guards are so bulletproof, so impervious to pedal strikes, that I could just forget about all of the risk and concentrate on flipping the pedals round. Removing fear and crank flips are easy. You just flick the pedal round, and when the time is right, you stomp it, and it's landed. When you're learning, you are going to miss the pedals, and the pedal is going to hurt your shin. But the shin guards, there are no consequences. It's just like a sandbox where you can learn however you like. It's much more difficult to do these on a jump because you've got to consider going over the bars and stuff like that. This is where I tapped out on the video, but Cathro ploughed on and attempted to learn this. If you want to find out how he got on, go check out the original video. It's a keeper. This got me thinking about my learning process as a whole over the span of this entire channel. This little hack or trick or cheat, whatever you want to call it, clearly made me learn this trick faster. I wonder how many times in the past that there was a cheat or a hack like this available to me and I didn't take it and it actually inhibited my learning and made me learn slower. Or I was trying to look cool and not look like a total dork and that slowed me down. When I tried to learn to ride bike rollers, I insisted that I learn it on clipless pedals. That is, you're clipped into the bike like you would be if you were doing it for real. But this made my learning process agony. I was falling over the place. It, it, it just made things more difficult for me and there was no need for it. I could have learned on flat pedals and then transitioned to clip pedals whenever I wanted. Just recently, I learned bunny hops on a bike as well. And once again, I didn't wear shin guards. And constantly in my brain was this fear of hurting my shins if I messed up and it did happen and it was the worst shinny ever. 
Why didn't I just put them on and look like a bit of a dork and just take the easy route and enjoy the learning process? With muscle ups, I actually got this one right. I used bands from the start because I knew that I just wasn't able to do it without bands and I perfected my technique so that when eventually strength came, my technique was there and I was able to get up on the bar. This is the right way to do things. My point is, learning is hard enough as it is and there are no extra points for being a hero and there are definitely no extra points for looking cool. That's why I always wear this helmet. Some people comment on this helmet, why are you wearing a trials helmet when you're mountain biking? Well, the reason is it protects my ears. Well, at least I feel it does. So I feel more protected, I feel more comfortable, I'm more confident and it actually ca causes me to crash less because I feel better on the bike. I just feel better protected. Even though it's not the coolest helmet in the world. So from now on, if there's a shortcut or a hack or a way that makes me learn faster, I'm doing that because isn't that the goal anyway? If you can pad up and remove fear from your learning, do so, that's not cheating. Likewise, if you can remove one aspect of learning so you can focus on another, also take that route, give yourself a break. I suppose the only downside is there is no solution to looking like a total dork, but to that I say, get over it. Riders Republic is now available on Xbox, PlayStation and PC. I've been waiting so long for a game that features proper mountain biking. So when I decided to make more mountain biking videos, I got in touch with the Riders Republic team and asked if they wanted to work together on a video and they were happy to sponsor this content. It's an open world game with real players in the game. So you can mountain bike, ski, snowboard, and there's a wingsuit. And the world is based on the US national parks. So there's like Sequoia and Yosemite areas and the world is just gorgeous. You could do proper racing if you like, or you could just do freestyle events, or you could spend your whole time just exploring the massive map. What I really enjoy about the game is its realism. These are real bikes you're riding, they're not just generic 3D models, these are real bikes that you can buy in real life. And there's real steeds. Just look at these whips. If you're into snow sports or bikes, you'll really enjoy the mechanics of this game. They've really got the feeling pinned down. I saw a really cool clip behind the scenes of Fabio Wibner in the development of this game, so they've worked with real riders to get it feeling just right. It's available on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC, and you get a free upgrade to the next gen console. So if you buy it on PS4 and then Santa gives you a PS5 if you can get one, then you'll get a free upgrade to the next gen console. So the links are down below. I hope you give it a go. It's been a really long time since there's been a good game out for Adrenaline Junkies. Thank you very much to Riders Republic for sponsoring this video, and thank you to you for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.